This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and good evening. Happy Friday. God bless you. I am Pastor A.D., Pastor Truvine, MBC here in Houston, Texas, and I'd like to welcome you to what I call the pastoral moment. This is the time that I'd encourage you, enlighten you with the Word of God, and I pray that you are enlightened with the Word of God, and I pray that, that you are spiritually filled. And uh, today I'm going to talk about sanctification, sanctification. That means to be set apart, to be holy. And that's how every believer should be. Every believer in Christ should be set apart from the world. You should be different. There should be something about you. The light, you should be the salt of the earth, the, the uh, light of the world. There should be something different about you. You should stand out. And today I want to talk to talk about sanctification, this process that we are in, this process that we are in while, while here on earth. Because remember, when God comes back for his church, when he comes back, or absent from the body, present with the Lord, when you pass away, um, you are to become just like him. You are to be glorified. And so, so glorification, we'll receive glorification one day. But today I want to talk about sanctification. And so I'm starting with John 17, 17, John 17, 17. It says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Very short verse, but powerful. Accordingly, believers are set apart for God and his purposes alone so that the believer does only what God wants and hates all that God hates. Sanctification is accomplished by means of the truth, which is the revelation that the son gave regarding all that the father commanded him to communicate and is now contained in the scriptures left by the apostles. So this is this is what helps sanctif sanctifies us is the word of God. The word of God is so powerful and it strengthens us. And it's the truth because Jesus is the truth. Remember, the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. Jesus dwelt among us. So so there's power in sanctification. There's power when it, when you are a believer. And the thing about um, being a believer, we have to make sure that we are being sanctified daily, cleansed daily. How? In repentance. We should be repenting, repenting every day. And we should have a repentant heart every single day. We should be repenting for our sins, um, our misdeeds. Even what you're thinking about, that's not of God. We should be repenting for that also. In Romans 6, 1 through 6, Romans 6, 1 through 6, it reads, dead to sin, alive to God. What shall we say then? Hmm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Paul says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that because many of us as were baptized, and to Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through the baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father in heaven, so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that your old man, was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin. So Paul begins his lesson on sanctification by arguing the, that in spite of that past of their past, all whom God has justified will experience personal holiness. Since we have the free grace of God, we should not be encouraged to sin. Certainly not here means that, uh, May it never be. That's what certainly not means. May it never be. For we are dead to sin, which is a reference to Christ. When he died in our place, that time, that one time event, therefore, we are counted dead with him. We have been baptized into Christ, not by water, but uh, this means an immersion, an, an immersion um, or identification is specifically with Christ's death. And resurrection. There is a new quality and quality to ourselves, a new principle of life um, that speaks of the believer's regeneration. And so we're, uh, as sin describes, the old life righteousness describes the new. Our old self died with Christ in the life, 
we we now enjoy is a new divinely given life that is the life of Christ himself. We have been moved from the unregenerate, that's the unrepentant, um, sales, presence, and control. So uh, we should not follow the remaining memories of his old sinful ways as if we were still under his evil influence. Although the old self is dead to sin, it retains a foothold in our temporal te temporal uh, flesh or our unredeemed humanness. And with this corrupted desires, the believer does not have two um, competing natures, the old and the new, but one nature that is the incarcerated in the unredeemed flesh. So we are uh, saved by grace. And uh, when Christ died, we died. When Christ got up, we got up. So a new man got up when Christ got up. So we, we're new now. There's no um, old person. There's no longer that. We are totally changed. We are totally changed with Christ because we are believers in Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 30. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So the redeemed not only are given the salvation by God's wisdom rather than by their own, but are also graciously given by his doing as a measure of his divine wisdom, as well as imputed righteousness, sanctification from sin and redemption by God in order that above all else, the Lord will be glorified. OK, so God is being glorified. Uh, even through our sanctification, even through our redemption, because what happened? Jesus died for us. And so he paid it all. There's no such thing as purgatory that we go to after we live here, leave here because Jesus paid it all. All of it was paid on the cross for every sin, for every iniquity. Jesus paid it all. And now we have salvation. We have salvation. We have justification and we are sanctified. We have sanctification. We are to be set apart. We are now holy in God's eyes. We are now righteous. Okay. We are righteous in God's eyes. That's why we don't have to be judged when we die. We have to come before, understand one day we have to come before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account, but not to be judged, not to be judged. We will not be judged. Romans, uh, when you talk about Romans 8 and 1, therefore, there is no condemnation unto those who are in Christ Jesus. OK, so no judgment for us. First Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you. I love this verse. But you were washed and you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the spirit of our God. That's first Corinthians 6 and 11. I love it. So though not all Christians have been guilty of all those particular sins. Every Christian is equally an ex-sinner since Christ came to save sinners. Some who, who used to have those patterns of sinful life were falling into those old sins again and needed reminding that if they went all the way back to, to live as they used to, they were not going to inherit the eternal salvation because it would indicate that they were never saved to begin with. Um, washed refers to new life through spiritual cleansing and regeneration. Being sanctified results in new behavior, which a transformed life always produces. Since total domination is broken and replaced by a new pattern of obedience and holiness, though not perfection, this is a new direction. This is a new direction. So we all have been washed. We all have been cleaned. Those who are in Christ Jesus, we will want something. We, we will want something else in the world. We was doing worldly things. However, God has cleansed us. He has washed us. He has purged us. Okay. Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So when a person trusts in Christ for salvation, he spiritually participates participates with the Lord in his crucifixion and his victory over sin and death. The believer's old self is dead having been crucified with Christ. The believer's new man has the privilege of the indwelling Christ empowering him and living through him. That is amazing. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. 
Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for the church, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So Christ gave everything um, he had, including his own life, for the sake of this church, and that is the standard of sacrifice for a husband's love for his wife. This speaks of the love of Christ for his church. Saving grace, saving grace makes the believers holy by the agency of the word of God, of the word, uh, so that so that they may be a pure bride, a holy bride, a presentable bride. We may be that bride one day. We are for husbands to love their wives as Christ does church, does the church um, demands a purifying love um, since divine love seeks to, com to completely um, cleanse those who are loved from every form of sin and evil. A Christian husband should not be able to bear the thought of anything um, uh, but full in, in the life of his wife that displeases God. So his greatest desire for her should be that she become perfectly conformed to Christ. So he leads her to purity. Second Thessalonians 2 and 13. But we are always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth. So here Paul sweeps through the features of salvation, noting that believers are beloved by the Lord, chosen for salvation from eternity past. So before the foundations of the earth, set apart from, uh, from the world, from Satan, by the spirit and called to eternal glory, the sharing of the very glory of our uh, Lord Jesus Christ. So since we are sanctified, we are set apart. So let's act like it. Let's act like we are. So that's what it's talking about. We are, uh, we have been chosen before the foundations of the, of the earth. Our name was written in the Lamb Book of Life. This is called the doctrine of election. And so we have been chosen before the foundations of the earth to be in God's kingdom in, in eternity past. It's, 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 it's real. Philippians 1 and 6. Philippians 1 and 6. Am I sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus? He who has begun is a reference to salvation itself. When God begins a work of salvation in a person, he finishes and perfects the work. Will complete points to the internal, internal uh, security of the Christian. Jesus Christ is also called the day of Christ and the day of the Lord Jesus Christ which looks to the to the final salvation reward and glorification of believers. And our and we have um, 2 Timothy 2 and 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So he cleanses himself means to thoroughly clean out or to completely purge. For any waste bucket in the house to be used for a noble purpose, it would have had to be vigorously scored, uh, scorched, cleansed, and purged of all vestige of its formal filth. This is clearly a call up to separate from all who claim to serve God, but do so as filthy implements, useful only for the most dishonorable duties. Then we have Second Peter, Second Peter, first chapters two through four. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. So, to be godly is to live reverently, loyally, and obediently to war, towards God. Um, Peter means that the genuine believer ought not to ask God for something more as if something necessary to sustain his growth, strength, and perseverance was missing to become godly because he already has every spiritual resource to manifest, um, to be sustained in perfect godly living, to have that. 
So the precious promises of salvation result in becoming God's children in the present age and thereby sharing God's nature by the possession of his eternal life. Christians do not become little gods, but they are new creations and have the Holy Spirit living in them. At the time of salvation, the believer escapes from the power which the rottenness in the world has over him through his fallen sinful nature. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So continual confession of sin is an indication of genuine salvation. While the false teachers would not admit their sin, the genuine Christian admitted and forsook it. And the term confess means to say the same thing about sin as God does to acknowledge his perspective about sin. Rather than focusing on confession for every single sin as necessary, John has especially in mind here a subtle recognition and acknowledgement that one is at the center in need of cleansing and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. So that's sanctification. So examine yourself, please. It's very important that you examine yourself with the word of God. Repent every day, daily repent. And God will purge us. He has already purged us on the cross and he will continue to forgive us of our sin. Continue to wash us every day. Every day we need a new washing from our sins. I thank you so much for joining us. Please join us once again on Sunday morning. God bless you and have a good one. We are the Church of Love. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.